Today we're going to be talking about this guy and what he is is a current switch. I periodically call it a current sensing device because that's what it does and when we talk about current we're not talking AC DC we're talking amp draw. So this device is all about sensing amps and that magnetic field that it has will activate a switch. So very simple it is a normally open switch on this device there's only one so uh, fairly simple operation so we're going to get out I'm going to show you a few specs on it and then we're going to get into the shop and go through a couple examples to get the idea for it. So I hope the lighting is good but uh, this is just a little part that I picked up off of Amazon uh, the manufacturer is Croxy and the model number is a CS TS0 they market it as a miniature current switch with a normally open uh, switch. It's just one switch right here. So whatever you're trying to control on and off, you know, your incoming circuit there, and if the switch closes, it'll the other one's going out, of course. So uh, it's fairly simple. This hole right here is where we'll, we will, um, we're gonna run our wire, whatever we're trying to sense the current on. We're gonna run that through there and bolt it down. So uh, not a whole lot of detail with it. I mean, it's probably one of the easiest things. It's not a typical relay where we have a coil that needs to get power in order to close a switch. That coil, uh, this coil of wire that's in here is gonna react to the amperage uh, in the circuit that we're monitoring and it is gonna close this switch here. So um, that's really about it. The one thing that it does say right here is that this does not work with any DC device. So it has to be an AC circuit and we have a two and a half amp limit. I'm going to try a couple things out here with different voltages. Most of what, most of what I'm, I'm using is 24 volts through the switch, but we are going to try 120. Uh, the voltage shouldn't matter. I've got some LEDs that we're going to do some things with as long as we don't go over the two and a half amp maximum that it says there, we should be okay. Okay, so back to the good old trusty air handler. Um, what I've got here is a standard electric heat air handler. Um, not going to focus on the outdoor unit right now, but I've got a simple fan relay. We've got a heat relay over in the corner, and I have mounted this current sensor uh, in the midst of all this wiring, so I, I hope you can uh, keep track of the wiring. But we've got a PSC fan motor, uh, and we're only going to use the high speed. So over here on the side, you'll see that the black wire is uh, on the fan relay for uh, high speed, and we've got the purple wire coming from the heat circuit uh, going through the normally closed. Okay. So for the for the first two examples, we're going to use this current sensing uh, relay or current sensing switch to monitor airflow. So the first example, uh, we're gonna be watching airflow and dealing uh, or running the low voltage Y circuit through the current sensing switch, and that's gonna be the setup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the L2 side of our blower. Um, if this was a 120 volt setup, it would be the neutral, but I'm gonna run this uh, L2 side of the blower motor, not the speed, because the speeds can vary, high, medium, and low. Uh, maybe you had an example uh, or a system where it would actually run two different speeds, uh, one for heat and one for cool, so that's kind of hard to keep track of. So the return path would always be you know, the one that I would go to. So I'm gonna run the L2 side of this blower through the current sensing uh, device, and everything is gonna be based off of that. Now, once the blower comes on, what I've done here is I have wired into the switch, I have wired in the Y circuit. So 24 volts is gonna come in and is not gonna be allowed to get to the contactor coil until the blower motor's on. All right, so the thermostat is called for cooling and what I've done is I've unplugged our yellow wire, the L2 wire for the fan. So the fan's not running. So I'm gonna pull 24 volt common off the fan relay here, and I'm gonna look at the Y coming into this current sensing device and the switch. So there's 27 volts on it going in. And I have two volts coming out. So the switch is not closed. So without amp, uh, excuse me, without current going through this device, 
the magnetic field is not created and the switch stays open. So we are not passing power. In this situation, um, you know, it, it would be nice not to freeze your air handler up, your evaporator coil, if your blower motor was bad. So in this setup, without the blower running, you would not get a call for cooling all the way outside to your air conditioner or heat pump. Now, once I energize the blower, and I'm just plugging this in to simulate a relay, you can hear the airflow. I can do another voltage check again. 27 volts going in, 27 volts coming out, or 26 volts coming out, and that'll go all the way out to the contactor. So, very simple device, but that's one application where you could use it. Airflow is established before the compressor is allowed to run. This will prevent slugging liquid back in the compressor. It's going to prevent freezing up a coil. Um, you know, if, if you don't have the airflow going, uh, count the waves. For the second wave, we're going to use this current sensing switch is to monitor the heat strip, uh, basically. So we've still got the L2 side of our blower uh, running through the current sensor. And this time I have put the low voltage W circuit through there. So in theory, or the theory behind this is, unless the fan is running, it will not allow your heat strip relay to get 24 volts to the coil. And in this case, we don't have a sequencer, so it's pretty instant. But um, um, it will not allow 24 volts to go to that heat relay and engage your heat strips without airflow. So this is very much likened to maybe a high limit switch and the safety features that it provides, but we're just doing something with the current sensing, uh, the current sensing uh, switch just to kind of show you, you know, different ways of thinking about things. So our thermostat is programmed to be an electric heat thermostat, and it's also programmed so that the fan is turned on by the thermostat and not using this purple wire from the heat relay circuit. If we didn't program the thermostat correctly in this situation, nothing would ever run in the heat because the heat strips won't run until the fan and the fan won't run until the heat strips. So this redundant purple wire that we have is, is kind, of, uh, kind of void at this point. So you had to make sure that your thermostat, if you were to do this, would be programmed to automatically engage the fan and not let the high voltage heat relay circuit uh, or heat strip circuit go through the normally closed to do that because we have to have the fan first in order to get the heat strips on. So right now nothing's running. If I were to, of course if I were to put the uh, amp clamp on the heat strips, it's nothing's, nothing's there. So, but I've also got it unplugged. So as soon as I, as soon as you tap this thing on, you can see my heat strips on. Blower's on obviously. And without the blower, your heat strips don't turn on. And you can hear the clicking of the heat relay as it, uh, the coil gets that 24 volt power. So this is just another, it's another safety for the heat strip and it's all centered around airflow. When I said you can just hear it clicking. So if we were to watch this, I'm gonna once again pull the common off of the fan relay, but I've got 27 volts coming from the thermostat going into this normally open switch. And I've got nothing on the other side. Once we establish once we establish that airflow, we can check power going in, 26 volts. Check power going out, 25.8 volts. So the switch is obviously closed. So that's a, another way to use it. All right, one more with the fan being the determining factor here for this current sensing device. What we're gonna do now is I've installed a 120 volt terminal block right here. And I've done this before and it's not perfectly to code, but to get the idea out there to you that in some units, especially your commercial units, you're very apt to have 
multiple voltages inside one unit. So for our example here, we're gonna use the blower and an indicator light. So over here in the corner, I've got my red and green indicator lights, and you can see that we're still using the return side of the blower motor for our signal. And what I've done is I've ran 120 volts through, since this is our controlling switch, and with the blower, we want to be able to identify if the blower's on or not. So that light switch over there could be sticking through, you know, a, a panel, uh, some type of enclosure in a mechanical room. So as we check with our uh, voltage here, I've got 120 volts and you can see that on the meter, 120.1. I've got 120 going into that current sensing switch and none coming out. Now this particular one, you have to mind your voltages and, and whatnot when you're dealing with these uh, any electrical device. You gotta make sure you know the specs. So there's not a voltage limit on this, but there is an amperage limit. And this one has a max amperage of two and a half amps. So as long as we don't exceed that, uh, which these LEDs won't, then we should be fine. So I'm gonna turn the fan on. And what should happen is once once the blower uh, has been powered by the fan relay, we should get a green light on in the corner, and there it goes. And then back off, of course. So, um, like I said, this might be a commercial application where you have uh, some, some different voltages or multiple voltage besides just your high and low power. You might have a medium power uh, in between. So not 24, not 240 or 208, but this is a 120 involved as well. So. Uh, it's just an indicator uh, circuit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this high voltage heater circuit. And we're going to run that through and plug it right back in where it was. So now we're going to use the heat circuit to give us an indication. So now what I've done is I've taken the uh, this red wire, which is for our, the high voltage for our heater circuit, and I've ran it through the current sensing device, and we're gonna control a red light. So heat strips gets hot, we tend to associate that with red. So in uh, cooling with blue, of course, or maybe even green, but uh, we're gonna, when the heat strips are drawing power, we're gonna turn a red light on. So that gives us, not on the low voltage side, but this gives us the high voltage. So the relay is already closed, uh, you know, made the switch connections, turn the heater on, and we're actually uh, using the heating element. So I'm gonna turn this on. Um, once again, this, uh, this red LED is, uh, I've got 120 volts going into uh, the power source here, um, 120 volts going into the relay, on the current sensing and then there's none coming out so the red lights off if everything works right and it's very simple wiring as soon as I turn the heat on what should happen is this relay is going to energize and uh, turn the heat strips on and we'll get a red light on in the corner hey there we go red light came on before the blower did and it drops out. So now with any of these, uh, and, and it's fairly simple circuits, just trying to get you to think about some things and uh, look at what's inside these units that you're working on. But uh, of course, if I wanted to do uh, one with the blower and the green light simultaneously, you're just gonna need two current sensing relays, or you could even go into detail about um, wiring a relay with a coil off of this switch. So best thing I could tell you is if you can draw it and make it work on paper, then uh, you can probably make it work in real life. So uh, I'm gonna do one more, but this time, uh, instead of using high voltage through the current sensing part of this, I'm going to use low voltage. So I'll show you, uh, and well, not even an old trick, but uh, something they used to do to increase the magnetic field is to wrap the wire around and around and around. Uh, they used to do that with your with your uh, amp meters 
if they're uh, and, and actually I've, I know people that their amp meter does not pick up until it's you know almost a, a, a fourth of an amp or 0.4 amps so they would need to wrap the wire a couple times so I'll give you an example of how to do that with this one and uh, we'll see how that works now look here I've ran the low voltage white through the current sensing part and I don't have a red light on. Okay, so this is something that, depending on the device you have, what you may have to do is wrap, wrap this a coil around this particular uh, current sensing device here in order to intensify the magnetic field. Now I've got it wrapped with two wraps or actually one wrap around it so it's the circuit's going to pass through twice and we'll see if that is strong enough to make this switch close. So two wraps was not strong enough. We're going to wrap one more and I'm going to do this until I find out how many wraps through this device it takes. But sometimes this is what you have to do, you know, if you're going to do like an aftermarket part or something. So uh, use your noggin. All right, so I wound up having to give it the good old college try and uh, 10 wraps, just like the textbook I, when I went through school, said. So. Uh, if you wrap it 10 times, then it intensifies the amp reading by 10. So if this was a 0.1 amp draw, then wrapping it 10 times will give a 1 amp draw on whatever device you're measuring the amperage with. So, uh, and I honestly, I believe in the specs, uh, I think that this is a 1 amp minimum for the current. So. Just turn the heat on. We got it wrapped 10 times. There's the red light. Um, nice little device. So if you see one, don't be alarmed. They're very simple. So uh, I'm going to take you over here to a unit and I'm going to show you one more that you're probably going to see more often than this Amazon one that I picked up. But uh, they're already out in the residential market and the commercial market for sure. So uh, hang tight. I'm going to show you this unit and walk you through it. So here's a unit that we have in the shop. And if you look at it, this is a standard heat pump for uh, for a lot of people uh, defrost board I've done a video on a two-speed outdoor fan motor so I've used this unit before but if you look uh, today's purpose was all about the current sensing relay or current sensing device that you'll see in uh, many many type of units whether it's residential or a commercial and I'm gonna focus on the residential side real quick because a lot of guys look at this box right here and I've got one that's removed and it's called a comfort alert. And it's a diagnostic tool that they've been putting in a, a, quite a few models. I, I won't say every model, but uh, it, it's definitely out there. So it's, its goal is to help you troubleshoot. And if you look at it, uh, you'll, you'll notice that it's got a list of different um, trips or alerts uh, little problems just trying to let you uh, in on and it's got RCNS okay now this comfort alert device has the high voltage compressor wires running through it and if you look on the front side of it it's also got some low voltage connections uh, wired to it as well so just like the current sensing device that I had earlier in the video you'll notice that uh, these wires run through here. If, if a wire is gonna run through a device, then it's gonna be checking your amperage. So it's sensing current, which is the whole reason that I was trying to, <clears throat> excuse me, the whole reason I was trying to do this. Even though you don't see it exactly as I lay it out or you haven't been to an air handler with this device in it yet, pay attention and, and look at the true function of what it's doing. This device is watching the amp draw that the compressor has. 
All right, this low voltage in the front, why is it giving low voltage? Well, first of all, it's, it's an electrical device, so it's probably gonna need power to run. So we've got R in common, okay? And we've got a Y circuit, okay? It jumps right down here to the contactor. Why would they give it that? Uh, and, the, and the short answer is, uh, part of it's watching amperage, and this part here is not only sending power to it, but it's watching voltage. It is looking at a call for cooling or a call for heating, right? So just to run through a couple of these diagno uh, diagnostic keys on here, um, it talks about the different, uh, it's got an alert and a trip, so a, a, a two different color LEDs. And so it's gonna tell you, based off of which one is, uh, is tripped or flashing, it's gonna tell you what's going on or try to point you in that direction. So one right here, number eight, says welded contactor. How does it know it's a welded contactor? How does it know to flash those, you know, that many times? Well, it's real simple. It's watching amp draw happen on this high voltage for the compressor, but it's not seeing 24 volts on Y. That's the thought process. This is why the Y circuit wires up to it from the contactor. It's already been through the pressure switches and 24 volts should be here, right? So they tapped in uh, this connection after all the safeties and everything, and it should be getting 24 volts to the contactor on a call for cooling, but maybe it's not. If this thing does not see 24 volts on Y, but it senses that the compressor is running, then it knows to blame the contactor. So that contactor switch is stuck closed. Uh, and that's just one example. Uh, it's got an open start circuit. How do you think it knows an open start circuit? Well, because it's watching the start and it's watching the run. So if it sees amp draw on the run and not on the start, then it knows that the run is fine and the start is probably you know to blame for some reason, okay? So uh, I'm not gonna go through every one of them, but um, like I said, we are using these things. What I need you to do is look at it and even though you've never seen something like this before, uh, in, in a lot of cases, uh, try, to, try to identify what you can and, and it'll make you better for it. So until next time.